to title this video, What Has Changed? Even though basically only the weather has changed, I haven't changed much in the way of my setup. And this video is going to be recorded during the time that we have a little bit of on and off drizzle. And that is a perfect time for me to show you what has changed, at least for now, because all the orchids are as exposed to the elements as possible. I'm always checking the weather report just to make sure they're not getting it wrong because when that sun comes out, these will get hit hard. And I've already had sunburn issues because of the angle of the sun coming into the blooming alley. And yeah, leaves were exposed and scorched, but we have a break in the weather, which is nice. So this I am filming like mid, is it? I don't even know the date anymore, but it's somewhere mid-September and I'll probably make this my end of the month little walkabout because we haven't had a table tour for a while, but I'll probably see how long this video goes and maybe we'll go around the entire patio. So if you're spending your time with me today watching this, no matter the length of the video, I really appreciate it and welcome. So it's a bit of a mess on the floor because I am in the middle of mask cleaning. You see some I've already managed to get to. I normally do the mask cleaning twice a year just to be on top of things. These I can't really clean that well because they've got silicon plugging some holes. I'm hoping that next season all the orchids that are in these kind of pots can be up into my classic pot and mask set then I don't have to worry about this nasty with the silicon and I'll be popping it off when I clean them. And the other ones are going to be easy because that's mainly just a bit of dust and stuff. But that's what I'm up to right now. And every time I turn the corner, I see them on the table. I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a break and I'm going to show you around as to what has changed, which is they're all out. My 100 liter Reverse osmosis bucket is empty, even though I want it out in the rain to collect as much rainwater as possible. Empty because for the past six weeks, well, since July 24th, I have had issues with my reverse osmosis filter. It has been very stressful. I have gone through 250 liters of stored reverse osmosis, and I'm hoping that the technician, by the time this video is aired, will have been here. There's a few things going on. Even though I'm not sure if my golf green hair pig here will bloom, matured way early, despite the massive division. I do have a sheath, but I don't see any swelling of the bud in there. That would surprise me because that would be way too early. But here's a beautiful sight. And even though I am risking rain on the sheath with the buds in there from my happy holiday, Fushu Glory Happy Holiday, it is important right now, considering what we've been through since the end of July with regards to my orchids and what they normally get, that they just get as much water and rain on them as possible. You never know if mañana applies in Spain. Tomorrow should the technician not arrive again. So whether I'm risking buds or sheets, that is not the point. At this point in time, it's important for me to get them nice and wet and flushed. They desperately need it, as you can see by all the dust on them. I've already started cleaning some leaves that I could reach. I also did a pest treatment yesterday in between the weather just because I saw some scale on my CG rolling, who is on the other side of the patio. But that included the Maxima, so these leaves are already clean just to make sure because they live next to each other. So, you know, a little bit of maintenance is going on while they are out. And then constant inspections and, oh, geeking out over sites like this. When I see roots like this, it just makes me so happy. And here's the sun scorch that I was concerned about because my blooming alley angle of the sun, my sagarique wax got hit hard, as did my durigan. So the durigan first leaf of that bifoliate growth has dropped because it got hit very, very hard. But other than that, here comes the sun and you see how exposed the table is. And if that sun, does get harsher and harsher. I'm gonna have to put the umbrella up because it's still early in the day that the shade is not coming here too quickly. And these guys don't need to get more scorched, especially you, pretty Maxima. Look at my Dendrobium antenatum. 
So these blooms have lasted absolutely ages. And I brought it out because rain is the best thing for rooting, in my opinion. We've got more buds coming and a lot more spikes following as well. How cool is that? I love it. My Moscom still has a really nice sheath, but there's no bump in it. So we still have a growth that has shown no signs of getting scorched. I guess that is my challenge. And when I pass this challenge and get it right, then we can focus on blooms. And let's have a look-see. Let's go around one more time. Let me show you how gorgeous the one Catlia Rex is doing that we potted up when I had had enough in our last care collab. Look at that. The pseudobulbs are plumping up. I know it doesn't look like much, but it is not paper thin anymore. And I do have roots in the pot and look at that little growth how that is progressing. Much better than the one that's still not rooted and still in ICU. Here's my Thompsoniana, my Schomburgia. Sorry for that jiggle. Got the two growths right here of this season and they're looking promising. Look at the sheath right on the back here. Well, I'm just seeing something here and I'm hoping it's just, yep, it's still just ash. Thank goodness, no eggs. But look at the sheath bract on this growth back here. Look at the size of it. We are back in business. That's awesome. Very pleased to see that it's been divided and then the next growth were itty bitty, but we're coming back to the size of a bulb that I had in previous years. So that's a good thing. My Leonis are going bonkers with roots and bonkers with growth. Look at the size of that. Probably losing the bottom left leaf. Here's the little one in the back and it's growing another leaf in the center there. Am I worried about water and rain and everything collecting here? Well, yes and no. I'm assuming they'll be fine. It is still warm enough. So I'm not concerned that this opening here is gonna let water in. And I hope I am not proven wrong. Then here is the Leptotis, <laughs> the first one ever. But look at this chubby little weird growth. But it's growing. A little flower spike. Ah, oh well, what a difference compared to the other one that I got from a Karen and Tokyo World Mark. What a difference. Here is Tibicinus. We did this potting up here into just semi hydro. Got the holes here. Let it rain, let it rain. And the next new growth is coming beautifully out underneath that we just saw. It was a tiny little growth when we did this potting up. Everything you see here is probably ash still falling from the sky together with the rain, then it dries. But this is the Spathulifera growing roots. And here is, who are you? Oh yes, pastoral innocence. All I have to do is look at a sheath that hasn't bloomed, look at another sheath that isn't blooming. I know that's my pastoral innocence but you've got roots growing, so thank you very much for that. And let's have a look. Let's have a little feel in there. Yeah, that's empty still. What else on this table? Oh, yes. Let me show you if it's possible. Well, let me tell you about it. I can't show you. In our blue heaven has a shadow in this stonking sheath. There is a shadow. Yep, I'm risking it, but it needs the water, it needs the rain. For me, that is most important. I have actually innerly given up on the fact that this will not even bloom this year because it's so late in the season, but hey, if it does, great. But for now, these orchids need fresh, clean water. My Wabash Valley is also showing a shadow in there. So we might get some blooms. And also my Lelia perinii back here, that sheath is still as hollow as a pea, full of air as it is and does. I don't know if it's going to bloom, but this table is full of goodies. I think I like seeing this again. This makes me happy. I couldn't do it at the end of July. I couldn't do it at the end of August. And now September, at least, they are getting a good, good drink. What I'm going to do as well, if the technician comes tomorrow, I will not be soaking them in silicon. 
but well, after the rain, I will flush the pots through with silicon and then put them in their masks back on the shelf. At least they get another little bit of a dose of silicon before the season is over and they come inside. So to the right of the table, I have a little chair set up with some side orchids that I try to protect from the harsh sun, try to protect from the harsh wind because there's a little Benjamini ficus tree here to the right. This is my Cymbidium no ID, call her beach balls. The new growths are coming on beautifully, beautifully. And then here's my Epidendrum Stamfordianum, totally stalled throughout 2021 because of the copper treatment I applied, seeing as these spots when it arrived had annoyed me to no degree. Did bloom for me in 2020, but not this year. We are resetting this orchid completely, but look at that beautiful new growth. She has woken up. I think the copper is out of her system. I'm happy to see that. And here are long time no see golden nuggets. Now you see the desiccation there on the pseudobulbs, same as the one right here. That is also because of the radical copper treatment I gave it because this orchid always had some suspicious markings and spots on the back of leaves. At first I thought it was virus, then I was just gonna bin it. Then I thought, give it another chance. Then I saw the blooms again and I'm like, oh, I can't let these go, they're so pretty. Then I dunked it in copper like there was no tomorrow, set the orchid back, killed the roots in the pot properly. And now I'm just waiting for new roots. And the growths that have come this year, they look a lot better than I've ever seen. I'm not saying that I've what I did treated it and got rid of it, but at least they're still with me and I haven't given up just yet. Eventually, and I know I say that all the time, eventually I will take care of these the way they should be taken care of. But for now, if you grow roots, then we're back in business. And then we shall see how the next season develops with regards to a good cleanup, if that's at all possible, and get rid of the junky looking things in the back here. I'm going to do a separate video on the catastetums that you see up here. But while they're looking so funky and cute, this is Jack of Diamonds. Confused much? We will call it Jill of Diamonds. But aren't they amazing? Gosh, I love these blooms. Oh, I know they're not the most desired ones and everybody else wants the male blooms, but oh, I love these female blooms. Let me see if I can... They have like a hard hat on them. These are super hard structures. Absolutely love them. And the... Black pearl of the dark, black pearl back there. Yeah, we'll talk about that, but they're doing well up here. So all these pots on these chairs have been positioned in such a way, seeing as they've got roots coming out of the bottom. So I don't want to kink those by placing them on a flat surface. <laughs> that is why there is no room for the catacetums anywhere, and I am not putting them on the floor. Just making sure that I don't bash these roots and just plonk the pot on a flat surface, just protecting what's coming out on the bottom. But we're back on the shelf here that is empty, sounding very hollow. This is my new Tolumnia pomegranate, just wanted to show you. She was rained on overnight, so I have put her aside just to make sure that I don't expose everything too quickly, just to get her, you know, nicely wet with fresh, proper water. And look at how she's opening up as well, clumping up. I mean, she is in excellent, excellent condition when she arrived, but you can see that the extra touch of water actually made a difference and the whole orchid is now spreading out nicely. And here are the newcomers from Floralia, still in their pots at this time of recording and probably for quite a while because they're not really doing anything on the root front. So there's no action going to be taken here. And as I was concerned about the Angareri, yeah. You see, I've got these little root stubs there that are tidying her over, but the back is already failing. And I'm hoping that the back doesn't fail faster than what it can achieve at the front. This orchid has me concerned. This was actually the orchid for the purpose of the whole order, along with the millery, yeah. So this is my filming staging area. It's a mishmash of everything at the moment. 
Especially you've got the citrina here enjoying rain. They are all enjoying rain, so I shouldn't keep repeating that, but it's such a novelty for me here after no rain since April. But yeah, so I've got citrina there. Renantanda sunrise right here. And this is the Leptotis back here that I got from a Karen and Tokyo World mark. That is a Leptotis bicolor. If you remember what we saw before. <laughs> no wonder I was shocked to see how long leaves should be on a Leptotis bicolor. And here is Darwinara blue. And this is the Apoyathea, Ascocentrum Apoyathea. Look at the roots this year. Happy, happy. And a root is going into the pot all by itself. All by itself, a branching root. That's amazing. Kristen Soniana Vietnamica, no blooms, but you can see I got me some more roots and they're about to stop growing, which is a big shame. But we got ourselves some more roots. This is the Phalaenopsis pulchra and it's starting to drizzle again. Yep, out in the rain. Yep, I'm doing this in the rain. Everybody in the rain, clean water. But what I'm really happy about is right here also, my Zobenicofia humbertiana. Look at what's happening here. Look at all those roots moving the lava rock around. I'm going to keep filming in the rain until I get a little concerned about the equipment. But look at this root right here. Zobenicofia humbertiana had more moves in and out of a pot in 2020 than any other orchid in my collection. Thank you, Orchid Top. Look at this orchid go. And I'm hoping for the similar success with my Mona Chica. She's growing her middle leaf as she should. And I hope that getting water in the crown doesn't affect her, but she needs a good dose of clean water as well. As do all my Tolumnias. They're all spread out, hanging around in different locations just so that they can get some rain on them. And then this is the polyanthem with its mad Einstein scientist kind of roots in the back. <laughs> Too cool. Yep, everybody is getting some water. They dried off very, very quickly after the rain stopped, but now they're getting more. And you can see a spike coming here, add some buds back over there, and the rain is getting heavier. So we'll pick this up when it stops. Oh, it's, this is a beautiful sight. I love it. Oh, look at the new growth here on my tuberculata. Look at that. Amazing. Oh, it's not as heavy now anymore, so let's continue. So what else has changed? Well, everybody is outside. One drop, two drops, a deluge, whatever it is, whatever they can take. Look at Exila is up there. This is my community mount of different dendrobiums, the aphyllum. The Ceratolabium and the Ceraula right here. Ceratolabium or Ceraula is growing a new growth. I just discovered that this morning. Oh, the beauty of being able to move your orchids around. Look, that's another new growth for Ceratolabium, which this year hasn't bloomed for me. I call it Sharky. <laughs> just the shape of the blooms are so cool. But it's grown really well. Got nice new canes. Yeah, it's growing well. I just, uh, no blooms. But never mind, bulk produces roots, bulks of the plant, healthy plant, eventually we will get blooms. And there are my two brassavolas right here. Still in bloom. La Geralis. Beautiful, lasting forever. And this is my zombie brassavola that came back like how? Don't know, don't care, just happy that it did. This is really taking off now. Absolutely loving it. It was a twig and I was about to bin it and I saw a little new growth somewhere last year. I put it for, you know, just for the sake of, well, it's trying to grow on a ninja mount and it's just gone bonkers. It's given me lots of new growth and this is the first one that is as substantial as I would imagine it to be. Happy days. More changes back here. I have moved one of the shelves out of the blooming alley. They get more light here, but no direct sunlight, especially the summer bloomers, the angle of the sun thing that had me freaked out. So now the sunlight doesn't actually hit this area at all anymore, but it's super bright anyways. Here 
Active Vandoglossum Alexandra, recently put into the setup and now getting rained on. It just couldn't get any better. The timing couldn't get any better. There's Pomilla. Keep, I keep checking the route. I have to. It's just something. You see there's one that's looking beautiful and the other one, yeah, dying off. Well, drying off, not dying off, but the root tips are stopping. And here's my Pretarmisa. And then we go on to the novelty hybrids that are doing fine. I didn't even address them this summer and they should have been repotted this summer. I'm sure they'll be okay for another season, but next year we're going to have to get into these. It's going to be 2022 is going to be Summer Fell Novelty Fell Potting Marathon. That's Bronze Age. This is Violacea Cerula. And I think I've got a little spike forming here. So we're looking good for spring next year. And this is Kaukichakut. I'm kind of looking for a leaf. I need a new leaf to start there. Tabasco Tex dropped its spike, which is a shame. There's still another one under the leaf here, not quite fully developed yet. We'll wait for that for spring. And another one is already going to come up. Or is this a little cakey? We'll have to wait and see. I, it looks like a cakey to me now. Yesterday I thought, well, whoopee, if you lose one, you bring me another one. That's awesome. It could be a cakey, it could be a spike. Speciosa cross with Violacea has dropped its blooms. Growing a new leaf, that's awesome. Oh yeah, Tabasco Tex, thank you, also a new leaf. I have my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum here, draped over nicely. <laughs> this is giving me a lot of pleasure because of course, this orchid was not addressed this year. It still has dirty lacquer in it from when I got it. I don't like that at all, but I was too tentative to address it this year. The roots are super thin. I know it can take another season, but to get a lot of rain now, that's amazing. This is my little giraffe going bonkers on the leaf front, getting another spike. Leaf, new leaf, and that's be the second leaf. This has already been formed earlier. So that'll be the second leaf already. And this is just finishing its new leaf right here. And I'm hoping maybe for a second leaf as well. And maybe next year, we can have a nicer bloom show from Little Giraffe. Down here, I've put my Ophilum keikis just to get them nicely rained on. Eonopsis popcorn haruri, my beautiful little golden fire Tolumnia also now has opened its second spike. Look at that. We don't want to hear anything about fire at the moment, but a golden fire in form of a Tolumnia, yeah. That is a pretty, pretty sight. First time with two spikes and the branching has started to open here on the first spike. The older blooms starting to drop, but nah, we've got more. And then back here, I have the Dendrobium bensonium. Mm -hmm. I know, looks a little bit tipsy topsy, but the rain gets through, hydrates the back of the mount there and then drips forward onto the roots down here. What a beautiful, beautiful mess. Love it. Big one. Gorgeous canes this year. Next year, it's going to look amazing when it blooms. And then just to give a little bit of a look-see down here, this is where all the recently repotted Lelias are. I know it looks very dark down there, but I don't want them up. Don't want them even getting bashed by a raindrop. So they are staying down there, nicely protected where I don't have to worry. If there's a wind gust, nothing, nobody gets blown out of the pot. My Parapharanopsis here, Labukensis. Look at this. I mean, I may lose this leaf, too much sun, but for once, for once, I've got roots going nuts in the pot. Covered one up just to keep it nicely wet. And it is a super slow grower, but <laughs> the one leaf, from this year. It's almost like a Demophorcus lowii. <laughs> well, that's a bit slower, but let me tell you, this is one season. Incredibly slow. We'll probably need another four years before that one blooms. Yin's Black Eagle finished its leaf. I'm happy to say that it is bigger already than the one before. I would like another leaf, please. 
lost a little bit of a fan from that cleanup, but I've got new roots growing in the pot and that is important to me. I'm really glad to see that there's progress and not a massive collapse of the orchid. And then look at these cuties. <laughs> this is Regentii, numero uno. And the second spike has opened as well. These are about to go. You can see how the lip starts to dry out a bit. But isn't that cute? Two spikes. That's a first for me. Two spikes open on a Rapiculus Lelia. We're getting there. We are getting there. And if we pan over here, it's the other piece of the Regentii, also in bloom. So that all makes perfect sense if it's a Regentii. And here's the Regina. And I'm getting two spikes on a plant as well, coming soon. And this spike has four blooms. This is progress and I love it. Love it, love it. This little one has three. Yippee, this is awesome. All right, and then down here are the newcomers from Anna. They've been rained on. They're loving it over here. I'm a little bit concerned about the leaf on this orchid right here, just the leaf. Not the orchid, she's okay. I'm not quite sure what is going on there. I don't see any pests. Not sure. But the roots are hydrating beautifully. They were dark, dark green this morning when I came outside. So that's the three of them there together. And I'm still filming and the rain has stopped. <laughs> Let's go over to the deep cell. Cousin It has parked up. Yeah, he has been absolutely amazing. Fantastic. And since the rain has hit him, it's like, you know, when the hair stands up on the back of our neck kind of thing, it's like alert. Well, the minute the rain came, he was like, whoa, I'm loving this. Perked up beautifully. And then here I've got my green hopper. I was actually hoping to have that root there come out and extend again. Yeah, nothing's happened. The one going into the lava rock, it's still green. I'm not sure how long that will last. And then I've got my beautiful bowl of the Orsteriae. This is Coelho stylus ciliaris variety Orsteriae. See those roots there? By this time last year, they were already in the pot. So these usually come out at the beginning of August. That's what makes the transition or repotting of this orchid so difficult because the roots come out bang in the hottest time of the year. Not in this case, we're a little bit later, but yep, enjoying the rain my two little Cattleya seedlings from three years ago when they were itty bitty tiny teeny weeny back there. Look at this. Very nice. This is also a little Cattleya moon something or other. Bluebell cross getting a new growth right there. Shrine Fortianum doing its thing. More growths are coming on the way and the roots. Bingo. Lots of roots. Love it. We recently saw Jumelia. I would really like to do a video on my Plectromynthus caudatus. We recently saw Bossery. And then we also saw quite a bit of Crestwood Tomorrow Star just because of what is going on back here. And I just can't get over it. I'm absolutely loving this. <laughs> Garen Weaver is also looking a lot better since his cleanup. I might be losing the leaves that have, you know, aged and had not been taken care of, but everything else, all the growths that were there first, when I was cleaning her up, they're extending beautifully, they're growing clean. And this morning I just saw another growth coming out a little bit ways away from the orchid. Yep, I should have done this a long time ago. Never let it come to that stage. But it's looking lush, everything in the middle. If I cut off all the yellowing bits, it would look fantastic. I'm not cutting anything off just yet. Though. And Kimmy, my Kimmy, performing artist, performing artist, but no blooms. The roots have gone nuts again in the back here. Like so, look at those root tips. Love. And I have a fifth lead now. Lead number five is right here. Let me see, let me get you there. I've got five leads on this orchid now. 
One, two, three, four, yep, five. No blooms, but she is growing so, so well. Oh, love this orchid. Don't care if you don't bloom. All the new Ancelia Africanas from the Afri orchids order. Look at them. Look at these growths. Insanity. Gorgeous insanity. I love it. More growths coming, roots. Everything is hunky dory. Even Kenya mud has given me two new growths. I only had this one at the beginning, and this one is following suit. And here is Buffalo and Leo. And you know what? I can pick the pot up. They're pot bound. How about that? In a very short period of time. Got them pot bound. This is awesome. And now with the rain, ha, this is going to be amazing for the time being while the temperatures aren't too cold. This is awesome. I'm loving it. And then for this next rain shower, I've brought out Serato Stylus Filipinensis because two nights in a row with rain, yeah, I was a bit cautious, but for tonight, she can be outside. No sun gets into this area anymore either. So we're gonna get her nice and wet and drenched. Are you still with me? <laughs> uh, what's changed back here? Well, you see, still got scattered tolumnias, getting their rain going. I've got my Rinko Stylus Gigantea Crosper Cerula Vanda here that, yeah, We'll figure it out one day. <laughs> Denisoniana, Rainbow Forest, Neostylus Lucneri, Blue, Neostylus Lucneri, new roots, super happy, and the fan in the back is also getting new roots. There it is. <laughs> and then up here, another Tolumnia. I brought out my Hawaiara Lava Burst. Let that get rained on. <laughs> Leopard yawn, second spike. Fabulous. This one needs to pick up because I don't like the fact that it's not given me any new roots since the copper treatment. And uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking these are stress spikes. I need some roots for this orchid. And then down here, I've got CG Roblin giving us some buds. Yes, I'm risking those. More important, they get a good flush. And here's Guatemalensis also with two sheaths in its growth. Beautiful, and those growths are a little bit larger than they were last year, which is fabulous. I may just be starting to get this orchid happy and fertilized correctly to get it to its full potential. I've got a shadow in there. <laughs> right, and down here then, a little bit of a mishmash. White bridal can sit in and get some rain. I got my Neo Phoenicia Fulcata, my Wildcat, and my Lundii. And here is Cordata, fully grown growth of the season, and it's got a sheath. Now, if that one blooms again this year, that would be a first as well. If you're still with me, thank you, thank you. Almost there, what else has changed? Well, look at this funky little fencing wall here. I've brought them all out. Here's my Unicum. We're finishing with the growth of the season. Look forward to getting a second one next year. And this is the monster mount of the Aphilum keikis that I did earlier. Look at how these keikis have developed. Look at this. Look at this. And they're starting to kink out of the shape that they were in when they went on the mount, based on how they grew on the canes of the mother plant. And they're starting to cascade according to the light source, which always comes from here. You see how it's turning. You see this one was stuck this way and it is turning according to, this is the growth since it's been on this mount. And the roots, check them out. This is amazing. I'm well pleased, well pleased with the progress here. And you know what? I have a feeling that some of these canes will bloom next year. Not the spectacle I'm looking forward to in a four years time, but this is going really, really well. Super pleased with it. But <clears throat> now we get back to the balance that I'm not too pleased with is my anosmum. And I have a feeling I may need to address that setup next year, give it something that's a bit more vigorous. Victoria Regina, ooh, you're too dry. How quickly these things dry out. Gonna have to give it some water. 
I really want it to get rained on, but I, I do need to supplement watering on that one because it's going mad. Growths everywhere. I've got two here. And you know, I all thought I was only getting one new growth this season, which was this one right here. And it turns out now she's pumping out two more growths. And there's a third one down here, which looks a little bit brown. And that is concerning. You see that? The brown brack around it. I may need to look at that a little bit closer once I've finished filming. That's not what they should look like. Hmm, I may have lost this one. Anyway, that would be a pity. But yeah, from one, at least we've got three more this season, which is good. We'll see what it does. Because if it aborts that growth, I may still be in time. It may just say, well, I'm gonna shoot out another one. So there. <laughs> And I'm gonna love and leave you and thank you so much for being here just with another quick look at my gracilis here. We're starting to get some blooms. They all look a little bit wacky because they didn't come out of their sheaths properly, but look at the new growth of the season after taking it off the mount and putting it into this very, very wet setup of Akadama. Check this out. I'm getting one with concertina leaves right here. That shouldn't be happening. We don't want that anymore, but look at all these blooms. It's like finding strawberries. So cool. Yeah, I'm happy with how this setup went. And we can talk about it more in a separate video if you are interested, then just let me know. I'll take her out and we'll discuss her because we need to have a closer look at these gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. Beautifully fragrant as well. But they will be everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. I, I know this might be quite the long video. Just wanted to show you what has changed, how it's doing, and especially with the weather being as it is right now, great opportunity to have a quick glimpse at 70% hmm, of my collection. Oh well, we'll do something else another day. Your time is so appreciated. Thank you very, very much. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.